Hello, welcome to another lit episode. In this video, I'll show you all how to create self-inking stamps using the Trudat stamps. We will be using the Printy 4926 series, which has an inking size of 1.5 by 3 inches. You can purchase it in our website, laserillusionstech.com, under Accessories and Supplies. For the stamp itself, we will be engraving laser bull rubber from Crotec Canada. They are the grey ones. They are really awesome for engraving since it's almost odorless when you engrave it. Part 1, I'll show you how to prepare your stamp design. I'll be using Lightburn to do this, but the concept will be the same no matter which software you use. And in part 2, uh, will be the actual engraving of the rubber in our laser cutter. I'll be using my 50 watt homemade laser cutter for this tutorial. For part 1, the first step is to open Lightburn and load your image in your workspace. I've already done that here. Um, I'll be using the logo for Basta Barbecue, which is a local barbecue business here in British Columbia. Make sure to use only images that are solid black and white in order to easily vectorize it. The next step is to trace the image using the Auto Trace tool. Um, you're going to want right to uh, select your image, right click, and go to Trace Image. Then fade the image to see the tracing better. And you want to go ahead and go around your design to make sure that it's tracing properly. That's acceptable. And press OK. Then after that, you can go ahead and create a 1.5 by 3 inch rectangle which will be the size of our stamp. You go to the rectangle tool here and create any shape rectangle. We want to uh, disable to unlock this aspect ratio so we can change the width and height independently. And you want to make sure that you're in inches. For the width, we will put three inches and for the height, we will do 1.5 inches. And we want to go back to our selection tool here. And then let's grab our tracing and we want to resize it so it'll fit inside our rectangle maybe a little bit bigger and then we want to put it in the middle of this rectangle so what you want to do is select your design and select the rectangle at the same time and click this button right here which will align both vertical and horizontal axis after that we want to actually offset this rectangle and make a copy the outer rectangle will be the border for our engraving and the inner rectangle will we will use for our cut lines offset distance doesn't need to be too much uh, it can be minimal and you want to make sure to unselect this uh, because we want to keep the original object and you want to make sure the direction is outwards. For corner style, it doesn't really matter. You can keep it to round. Press OK. And if you zoom in, there is two rectangles, one inner and one outer. So after that, we want to define our cut and engrave layers. Uh, the design and outer rectangle will be in the fill layer. So our fill layer is red. and the outer both red and we want the inner rectangle to be our cut layer so we'll 
the color of that black and you want to make sure that the fill goes before the line layer because we want to engrave first before we cut it out uh, once you do that we need to add the ramps to the design the ramps will add structural support to the logo uh, you can experiment with this yourself uh, but just thing to keep in mind uh, is that the more thin bodies you have the higher you need to set your ramp value since the thinner bodies will need more support so you want to go ahead and double click on the fill layer which is the red layer go to advanced and ramp length we will keep it to around that or yeah 0 0.0197 press ok select everything alt p to preview as you can see if you zoom in a little bit You can see the ramps, which is the black parts. This one will add support to your bodies right here. This looks good to me, so I'll keep it like that. Press OK. And then after that, we're going to have to set our speed and our power. For speed, I want to keep it pretty slow, so I will set this to 250 millimeters per second. For min power, it has to be 0%. This is for our fill layer. Uh, the reason being is that we will have ramps. For the max power, it will be different for all machines. But for my machine, uh, I found that 45% is sufficient to get a good engraving. Line interval, I want to keep that at 0 point zero five which is five hundred eight lines per inch and everything else is okay press ok for our line layer double click that we will keep the speed at 10 millimeters per second max power 58 percent and min power should be equal to your max power again this is different for all um, machines so you just have to experiment as well which one will work for you and which one will uh, cut through the rubber press ok and the last step before we send it to our laser cutter is to select everything and we want to mirror it we need to mirror it because um, once you use your stamp the image will be mirrored after that, you can go ahead and send it to your laser cutter and it will move ahead with uh, part number two, which is uh, the actual manufacturing of this stamp. Okay, welcome to part two of this tutorial. We have this laser rubber here that we're going to be using from Trotec. This is the Trodat laser rubber. You see there's two sides to this. One side, I don't know if you can see, but there's a printing that says Trodat. And the other side is just flat. We're going to be engraving on this side, the flat side. So take off the paper and we can load it into our laser cutter. I'm using a 50 watt laser cutter by the way. And once you load that, you can go ahead and set your Z axis. I already set mine up for this material, so it's okay. And we'll set our origin and I also have our Basta barbecue uh, design already loaded into um, the laser cutter. So we'll set our origin around right here. We'll try to waste as less material as possible. Okay, let's see what that looks like. That looks good to me. All right. And before you start, you want to turn your DC fan blowing across from your um, from your surface. So we'll turn that on right now at low speed. And we want our air assist on and our radiator on. And 
the coolant exhausts so yeah the exhaust the air exhaust the coolant flows on and the laser power is on and we're ready to start this will take approximately seven to eight minutes uh, so I'll see you after it's engraved All right, now it's done. Let's turn off our power, our exhaust, and air assist, and our DC fan, and let's take it out. And the next step is to wash it. We have to take away all the soot that's been left on there after the engraving. So I'll get back to you. I'll just take it to the sink and uh, run water through it. And I'll show you guys the final results after that. Alright, so there we have it guys. I'm really happy in how this turned out. It looks really awesome. The next thing we have to do is we have to mount it on this uh, Print T4926. It comes with this uh, self-adhesive, uh, double-sided adhesive that you will mount on one side your, um, your engraving and on the other side you will stick it onto here. Okay, now that you mounted that, you have to take off this blue um, cover here so we can stick it onto the stamp. After that, you want to unlock it by pressing on this again, uh, pressing on the stamp and it'll unlock itself and it'll self ink as you can see here press on it a few times to get the ink on the rubber and we can try it out okay the first trial there you go guys it's perfect Alright, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys learned something from this and try it out yourself at home. If you have any questions, just um, post it down below or you can email me laserillusionstech at gmail.com. Also visit our website www.laserillusionstech.com. Yeah, thanks for watching guys and see you guys in the next video. Cheers.